Hi guys. I remember uh, last video we did the IMDb movie reviews and uh, I was just playing around. Well, I wanted to improve it for you guys this time. Okay, as you remember last time, we imported the tokenizer, which strips it of punctuation and then the pad sequences. Well, you know. And then we assigned it ta training and testing labels. And, of course, you remember the old token, which is very important. But here's where we changed it from last time. The vocab size was 100,000, but the max length now is 1,200. Although, if you're going to mess with this neural network, uh, you are going to get into a little bit of shapes like you would in a convolutional neural network if you change this right here, if you add another zero. Okay, guys, and uh, as you can see from last time, remember the, vo the vocab size and the embedding dim is uh, right here. Okay, the only difference now is we have four neurons same activation and then same activation at the end. Remember, this always has to be a one after you flatten it. Even with a convolutional neural network, uh, this has to, right after it's flattened, it has to be a one if it's a binary or multi-class, it can be uh, how many ever classes are in the data set. It's a little trick I learned. I mean, did 5% dropout and then, um, Sigmoid is always the best activation function because if you want to copy me and you do softmax right here, trust me, it won't be very pretty. That's why I don't like using softmax as an activation function. Sometimes I only use ton personally if it's an LSTM or something like that. Most of the time I use sigmoid, but this is just a regular neural network. Okay, guys, and then uh, we're going to go to model summary. And uh, as you can see here, this is what I'm talking about, flattened. And then you can see the output shape. You remember the 1200? The max len? This is how you know if you decide to go off on your own. And then remember, this has to be one because this is binary anyway. It's just like it'd be in a convolutional neural network. Okay, guys, now let's see how it did in just four iterations. Remember I warned you guys last time? You do uh, more than four iterations, you guys are going to get the validation loss increased a lot. Okay, but it's funny. It went from 29% to 37%. Validation accuracy decreased, increased a little, and then decreased the, uh, yeah, but it didn't go down a percent. Really, a whole percent. Yeah, like 0.9 percent. Okay, validation, the training accuracy is almost 100, but if I left, if I left it at another iteration, it would have done more harm than good. It would have hit 100 percent, but this validation loss, which is really important, would have uh, gone up as well. And this is already at 6% anyways. Okay, guys. And then as you can see on the charts how... Although this looks bad, but really, look at the numbers. Yeah, but this is how it looks. Although this data set, this is a very common problem. But this is if you guys want to do it for real. I felt like I... Okay, now we're going to get to how it actually did in the outcome, the deliverable. I really love this movie. Of course, that's, 80, that's almost a 1. It's 82 because it's uh, positive. I hated this movie. It was so horrible. Couldn't be further away from one, which is great. This movie is wonderful. They really need, need to make another one. That'll be nice. 84. This one actually scored more positive than this one, according to the model. This movie was so realistic. It showed you the creativity of the writers. I would say that's a positive review, but the model... Um, Kind of made it 
Um, towards the negative, yeah. That's why validation loss is a little important. And yeah, of course, this could not, this is almost, this is so negative. Look at it. <laughs> And then I love how far Hollywood has come in its depictions. Great movie. Oh, it's probably because uh, the word, um, yeah, great is probably what made the model predict it more better than this. Uh, I hate how fake Hollywood has become after seeing that movie. Yeah, that's a negative review, but you would think that it would be up here with here. That's it. They lost their edge. What down the train? Okay, looks like we got two of them that uh, didn't. Um, yeah. Then again, uh, I didn't use any harsh words. These This data set's kind of trained on harsh words. So that's why this is not the best data set also. I don't know why a lot of people are complaining that movie was original. Well, honestly, like I told you in the last video, I used the same sentence. It's really easy for somebody to, for a model to take that the wrong way. A human... This would be more of a neutral review, like a point fifty. Like, because you're saying, I don't know why a lot of people are complaining. That movie was original. Like, it, you're saying, like, it wasn't bad, but it wasn't good. Which would be more like in the point five. In the in an actual outcome. And as you can see how I did that, right? I put, uh, you can put exclamation or uh, parenthesis. It doesn't matter. It's in Python. Okay. And then as you see, the sentiment, that's what shows up right here. And then the string and the output, the review thread, obviously right here. And then I in range. Well, you guys know enough Python. Okay. Now, guys, uh, a lot of these tutorials, they're not very good because their validation loss is horrible. In fact, I did one as a joke, and it's validation loss. You won't believe this. It was almost two, and they left it at 12 iterations. This is what I'm talking about. And the, uh, whatchamacallit, these were so far off, it was so funny. Okay, and then their validation accuracy... Yeah, it actually dropped to like uh, 72%. And these guys, and I guess they were being for real or they were just trying to teach the basics. But anyways, um, something to keep in mind. Always do a model summary just so you can check your, just so you don't hit history equals model fit and then error. And then you're wondering why. Look at the 1200. Look at the output shape. Flatten, it's got to be one. Okay, guys, and remember, sigmoid is always a good uh, activation function at the end for binary. Relu is always good, whether you want to put more layers or less layers. Remember, I used two layers over here and two layers over there. Always remember, the more neurons is not necessarily better, and then less is not necessarily better either. Yeah. And then always remember when you do the test train split as supervised equals true. Always do that. Anyways, you guys see this. Uh, if you guys see my video, feel free to improve it. Go off on your own then and uh, try and uh, make it at less than four iterations. Sometimes the less epochs, the better, because you got to keep all four metrics in mind. Okay, thank you guys. Have a good one. See you next video. Next video will be IBM. I'm taking a break. Next time I'm going to teach how to deploy an IBM Watson. We're going to deploy a regression model. Then we're going to deploy a classification model. 
And after that, uh, I'm thinking a scikit-learn recommender system. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.